going to help show you how to make division of decimals more concrete for your students. So if you gave your students a problem like 3 and 2 tenths divided by 8 tenths, that's hard to conceptually understand. Your students first need to understand that 3 and 2 tenths is your total, and we're dividing it by 8 tenths. I don't know how to make a make 8 tenths of a group. So in this problem, I'm going to understand 8 tenths as the size of the group. But your students will figure that out as they're beginning to solve the problem. They learned about what division means in third grade and fourth grade. So they'll be able to build that understanding as they're exploring a problem like this. Building 3 and 2 tenths, knowing that this is going to be the size of my whole, would look like this. And your students have done that a lot when they were working with decimals. I can't divide it into groups that are 8 tenths big with my manipulatives here. I need to be able to break apart my wholes. So I'm going to replace each whole with tenths. I know that if I put 10 tenths on top of one whole, that they'll be equivalent. So this whole is equal to 10 tenths. This whole will also be equal to 10 tenths. And my third hole, I can also replace with 10 tenths. Which means that my number, 3 and 2 tenths, is equivalent or can also be called 32 tenths. 10, 20, 32. I'm going to divide them into groups that are 8 tenths big. I now know how to do that because I have 32 of them, and I know that I can put them into groups that are 8 big. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I took my 32 tenths and I divided it into groups that are 8 tenths big, and I got four groups. I didn't get parts of a group, I got whole groups. 3 and 2 tenths divided by 8 tenths equals 4. If I think about this, that's my number of groups. If I use reasoning and estimation, this is close to 3. That number is close to one whole. Three divided by one is going to be close to three. Four is close to three, so I know that I can check my work using estimation. I'm going to show you another problem that works on dividing decimals, but looks a little bit different. This problem still has 3 and 2 tenths, but this time I'm dividing it by a whole number. I'm dividing it by 4. So I still need to start with my total amount, but this time I'm going to divide it by 4. And I, when I think about that with division, and your students will do the same thing, it makes sense for that to be the number of groups this time. Because when I have a whole number, that makes more sense to me and it's easy to do. But I can't take my 3 and divide it into 4 groups easily. So I'm going to have to do the same thing, remembering that 1 whole is equal to 10 tenths again. So I can replace that. And I can do the same thing with each of my holes. So again, I will have 32 tenths because three holes equals 30 tenths and then I have two more so I have 32 tenths and I'm going to divide it by four because I want four groups this is very natural for the students this is like fair sharing so they know they just divvy them out until they get this 
get rid of all of their tenths. Noticing that I chose numbers that equally divide into four. I did that on purpose when choosing this problem because I always want to have at least one whole number, whether it's in my dividend, my divisor, or my quotient. So I was able to make four nice groups out of my 32 tenths. My answer here is going to be how many are in each group. Remembering that this was my whole, so this is equal to one tenth. In this group there are eight tenths. So my answer is eight tenths, and that is the size of each group. By allowing your students to explore division of decimals using manipulatives, you're able to connect it to equations and help them build a conceptual understanding.